guys welcome to DTW Math Plus welcome okay so in today's video I'm going to be solving 25 GED math practice test okay to help you prepare for your forthcoming GED exam and um, this is the part one the parts with calculator where calculator is allowed and um, the part two also which is also 25 I've also solved that I'm uploading both um, both videos the same time on uh, on the on the DTW Math Plus channel and the part two is the parts without calculator which is more um, intensive so uh, I'm gonna leave the link to the part 2 so immediately you finish watching the part 1 which is 25 questions then you can go to the part 2 I didn't want to uh, put them together cause it to be quite heavy okay because of the size and um, so so in this video we're going to be solving 25 GED math practice tests together okay to help you in your forthcoming GED exam as DTW tutorial math plus is here to support you in your math for your GED test okay and if this is your first time on this channel please try to click the subscribe button we're quite a new um youtube channel okay i okay my first goal actually for the for this channel is to you know um introduce all the math topic under this the gd um curriculum okay that's the guide and um from your fractions if you check you see videos of from your multiplication divisions and and all but i noticed that not men not uh, many people were not so much people were watching the videos so I uh, so I just I just said okay maybe some people must have gone past the fractions and all that and before I get into algebra and um, your probability and statistics it might take a lot of time so why don't I just solve like a general that covers everything first so it helps even those that have um, um, read past the division multiplication and all but um, I'm looking forward to to um, within a year cover up the GED syllabus by introducing the topic explaining them solving examples under them but for this this is to help you prepare for your test okay that's if you're already ready for the test you've been reading for a long time and you're ready for the test go through going through this video it takes you through the GED syllabus that's the curriculum that's the study guide for maths all right it takes you through we have statistics probability word problems algebra everything it takes you through that's the, the complete 50 questions you know this is part one which is 25 then the other part is uh, the second part part two which is uh, also 25 questions solved all right so we're here to support you please try to click the subscribe button to support us to do more we're quite new please please click the subscribe button please i will really appreciate so we could do more and also share this um, um, um channel with your friends family and loved ones and also give this video a thumbs up and also we would love if you can also support us by getting your kaplan textbook you know apart from watching videos a textbook will also help you in preparing for your exam to practice you know it's not about watching you also have to solve okay Okay, get question practice and practice solve that math yourself as practicing will help your confidence okay to kill every tension in you and when you practice the more the better you are prepared for the exam so try to get the Kaplan GED um, textbook okay um, in the in the video description box I'm also go going to drop our Amazon um, affiliate link please try to support us by getting it through the link okay and also um, your Texas and the calculator you're going to use all right also the link is also in the video description box below please try to support us through those links okay our affiliate links i would really really appreciate this and also we have a facebook group where you can come on come on the on the group and post your questions you know take a a picture of the question you're having difficulty in and definitely i'll respond to you by solving it or even making a video for you all right and on the dtw math plus channel you see some videos i've solved for um, um students preparing for the ged math practice test on the group so you can also join the, the facebook group and I'm, i'll leave the link of the group in the video description box below all right okay so thank you so much and um, before we get into the video I just want to let you know that um, Jesus Christ is coming soon give your life to Christ because he is the way is the truth and is the life he is the one that will help you recover all your lost years and also give you salvation joy he's the one there's peace in him and everything good is in Christ Jesus which gives you all things beyond your imagination and better still he gives you eternal life so please try to give your life to Jesus Christ 
Christ. All right. Okay. And also, I'll also let you know that you are destined to win in every endeavors of your life. You are destined to win. Don't let any devil tell you you can't make it. You can't do it. All right. With the power in the name of Jesus Christ, you will do it and you will succeed in life and your generation shall rejoice with you. All right. So thank you. So let's get on to the video now. Question one of the GED math practice test part one. That's the part with calculator. Okay. Where calculator is allowed. It says Veronica went to the nearby drugstore to buy medicine for her family. She needs to buy two bottles of headache gun and a bottle of aspirin. If the headache gun costs uh, $2.37 a bottle and the aspirin costs $1.56, how much change will she receive if she pays a $20 bill? Okay, so how much change will she receive if she pays a $20 bill? So we need to know the total amount, okay, she's going to spend. And that's the amount of two bottles of head egg gun and one bottle of aspirin okay and we know that the cost of one bottle of, he of head egg gun is two dollars thirty seven cents so let's know the cost of two okay to buy two so we have two point three seven that's two dollars thirty seven cent times what two if we multiply this punch in your calculator you should get four dollars seventy four cent okay and um uh, the next is uh, aspirin. Aspirin. She's just getting one bottle of aspirin, and it costs what one dollar fifty six cent. So let's add one dollar fifty six cent to the total cost of um, the two bottles of head acorn. So we have here one point five six. Okay. If you add this up together, we should have a total of um, this is a zero. Then this should give us a three. Then this should give us six. So we have what six dollar what thirty cent. Okay. So the question says, how much change will she receive if she pays twenty a twenty dollar bill? So we are just to subtract three dollar six dollars thirty cent from what twenty the twenty dollar bill. Is that not it? So we have twenty point zero zero then six point four three zero. Let's subtract this together, okay? Um, we're supposed to use our calculators, but let's do this together, okay? So we have zero here. Can we subtract three from zero? No, we have to borrow a one here. To become 10 and we still have to borrow a 1 here to become 10 so we have a 10 minus 3 is was 7 remember we've taken a 1 here so we have 9 left so 9 minus 6 will give us what a 3 and we have 1 left here so we drop what a 1 so the amount she's going to have with she's going to be left with her change will be what $13.70 and our right option here is option 3 okay this is our right answer Question 2 of the GED math practice test, that's the part 1, the part with calculator. It says, James went to the nearby department store because he saw an advertisement that said all men's clothing was on sale. While he was there, a special sale started that said all clothes were at additional 10% off, off of the original price. If the advertisement promised that the men's wear would be 12% off at the checkout, how much will James have to pay at the checkout for a $53 suit? Okay, so we have to take this question bit by bit. All right, so here it says, okay, he went because he saw an advertisement on TV that says, um clothing was on sale all right okay he just saw a, a random advertisement on a department a nearby department store so while he was there a special sale started that said all clothes were an additional 10 percent of the original price okay and the advertisement promised that men's wear would be what 12 percent off at the checkout okay so we had a first what he saw first was 12 percent off all right, so we have to take out the 12% of this particular price of the suit. All right, okay, it says how much will James have to pay at the checkout for a $53 suit? So the original price of the suit, suit is worth $53. And the first percent, the sale price he got, the first advert, uh, advert so promised was 12%. So let's get 12% of what? $53. All right. Okay, and that was 12% of $53. That's 12 divided by 100 times what? 53. And this will give us what? This will give us um, $6.36. Okay, so let's subtract this from 53. 
if we subtract this from 353 minus 6.36 and punch in your calculator it should give you that's 46 dollars and what 64 cents so this is the price to pay at checkout okay if there was no other um sales offered okay but from our question it says why he was there okay why he was there a special sale started that said all clothes were an additional 10 percent of the original price okay so it's definitely what from this word price okay from the word checkout um after removing our first word percent okay so this is our this is now our what original word price okay because he watched the advertisement which gave 12 percent off so his original price for this 53 dollar suit is what 46.64 uh, uh, cent so when he was now buying again another 10 percent off was given off now this price okay so we now have 10 percent of 46.6 okay dollars okay so and this will give us what 10 over 100 times what 46 point what six sorry six four okay if you punch in your calculator what are you going to get we are going to get what uh we're going to get four point what six six what four okay all right so let's stop at this so we're going to get four point six six for four dollars four dollars sixty six cent okay okay i think um let's leave out this four so we just have four dollars sixty six what cent all right so from here we can now subtract this four dollars sixty six cent from forty six dollars sixty four cent to get the final amount he's going to pay for the suit okay so we have forty six point what six four then minus what four dollars sixty six cent okay so what do we have here we're going to have what let's borrow a one can we subtract six from four no we have to borrow a one and drop a one here six minus that's 14 14 minus six will give us what a eight okay and what are we left with here we're left with what five we, we can't subtract six from five we have to borrow a one that will give us what a 15 15 minus six what would that give us that would give us what a nine all right and what are we left with here we're left with what five five minus four will give us what a one don't forget the decimal point and four minus zero will give us what a four so this is the amount he is going to pay at checkout okay Okay, for the $53 suit after removing all the old uh, percent um, discount he has been given okay so our right option here is option two question three of the GED math practice test that's the part one the part with calculator it says 0.453 kg is equivalent to one LB that's one pound and um, 0.453 001 metric tons is equivalent to a kg approximately how many pounds are equivalent to a metric or ton ton all right so uh, let us um, interpret this question now so we have 0.453 kg is equal to what one what pound okay one and also we have here it says 0.001 metric this is one metric ton is equal to what one kg okay this is one all right approximately how many pounds are equivalent to a metric ton all right okay so from here okay it means we have to now relate a metric ton to what pound okay so we have to um like substitute some values into another so we can relate metric pound to a what um metric pound no no metric ton to pound all right from here we have metric ton but here is kg uh, kilogram but you can see here we have kilogram and what's pound all right so from here we can try to find the value of the kilogram okay so we can substitute that value of kilogram into this particular what equation let's say this is equation two and this is equation what one all right so the value of gram here one kilogram here will be equal to we'll just divide both sides by 0.453 okay will be equal to what one divided by 0.453 okay that's one kilogram so we can 0.4 and don't forget our pound value here okay lb okay all right okay so uh, let's put in the value of one kg into this equation so what do we have here let me come down here 
okay so we have a no space all right so we have 0 0.001 metric ton equal to what our uh, one kg is now what one okay divided by 0 0.453 lb pound okay so the question says approximately how many pounds are equivalent to what one metric ton all right so how many metric tons are what in a what pound all right so what do we do we're looking for our what metric ton so we to get our metric ton we divide both sides by what 0 0.001 what one so mt all right when we mt if we divide this will definitely cancel out all right or should I just write it down? Let me just do that at once. Okay, so we have 0 0.001 divided by 0 0.001, which you cancel out. And here we have 1 over 0 0.453 LB divided by what? 0 0.001. All right, so we have empty metric ton is equal to. 1 over 0.453 when you have division sign here we change to multiplication and change it to multiplication this particular part will be what inverted so we have times 1 over 0 0.001 and if you multiply this punch in your calculator these values we are going to get what 1 divided by that this times this will give us what 0 0.0045 okay and when you divide one okay divide this one divided by this point in your calculator you're going to get what you're going to get what a two two zero seven point five zero five five okay lb okay so uh don't forget the lb all right don't forget the lb so from here looking at this answer here the closest option to here which is what the closest option is what two two zero seven which is what option five so we'll pick our answer as what option five so this is our answer all right our answer is equal to what two two zero seven lb all right which is option five Question 4 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 1, that's the part with calculator, it says Alpha Hacker 001 wants to back up his network data. His data is spread across three drives and he wants to consolidate it onto a single set of CDs. He has 120... Uh, he has 1,231 MB, that's megabytes on drive 1, another 3,452 megabytes on drive 2, and find the final one, 12,386 megabytes on drive 3. If each CD can hold 800 megabytes, how many CDs will he need to buy to create a complete backup set okay so how many cds will you need to buy to create a complete backup set okay and um you know the question says he has his data is spread across three drives and he wants to consolidate it into onto a single set of cds okay so he wants to consolidate it onto a single set of cds and on drive one we have this amount drive two we have this drive three we have this amount of megabytes of data so if see if um each cd if that's if one cd holds 800 megabytes how many cd will he need to create a complete backup set so we need to add up all the data uh, the amount of data on the three drives okay to know the total amount of megabytes he needs to back up then once we get that total amount then we'll divide by uh, a cd can hold what 800 megabytes so we divide the total amount by 800 to know how many cds his data would need okay so um total data is what that's one two three one plus three four five two plus twelve thousand three eight six megabytes and if you punch in your calculator you should get um you should get seventeen comma zero six nine mb okay mb that's seventeen thousand and sixty nine megabytes that's what you should get so we have to now divide this by what eight hundred so just 
rule the division line here when you divide by 800 punching your calculator you're going to get um you're going to have 21.336 okay so it's going to need um 21.336 okay and um if you see here it says how many cds will he need to buy to create a complete backup set okay and we can't buy a partial cd all right that's half half a cd because this 21, this point 3336 means um, he won't complete a whole full CD here, okay? Um, all right. So, and definitely he can't buy what a partial uh, CD. So he needs to buy an extra one, okay? That's a full one, all right? So we have to add one to what 21, so which will give us what 22, okay? So he has to buy what 22 CD to create a complete, a complete backup what set all right i hope you get this because you can't buy a partial cd all right like you say you're going you, you're going to to um to a computer store to get um 21 cds then half a cd no you you won't get that all right because the, the question says each cd can hold up to what 800 mb and this point 336 um my is telling us that maybe this is like 336 the remaining data one will divide is um 336 mb okay and which is not up to 800 mb but we have to buy in an extra full one okay so it can contain what the um the 336 mb yes you still have some left since you can't buy half a cd it's just a full cd so you just add one to 21 and our answer will be what 22 okay and you can see from our options here um option four is saying 21 if he buys 21 cd he is not going to create a complete backup set. There will be a 0.3336 data, MB of um, data still remaining for him to backup. Okay, so it is um, the right option here should be what 22. All right, so our correct option here is option 5, which is what 22 CDs. Question 5 of the GED math practice test, that's the part 1, the part with calculator. It says a high-end fiber optics line can upload data at a rate of what? Three, uh, that's 37,500 megabyte per second. How long now? In bracket it says to the nearest tenth. Okay, close bracket. How long will it take to upload a network hard drive that contains 4 million megabytes of information? So how long? That is time. Okay. All right. So uh, to get how long, all we need to do is just divide uh, divide um, 30, uh, uh, 4 million by what? 37,500 MB. Since it says the line can upload data at a rate of what 37500 mb okay so all we need to do is just say four and we have um four million of uh, mb to what upload to a network drive so just divide four million by the rate at which the high-end fiber optics um line can upload data okay which is what 37 500 megabyte per second all right so when you do this this will cancel out and if you punch in your calculator this divided by this would give us um 0 0.66 okay 0.66 what second seconds okay and the question says to the nearest tenth okay so to the nearest tenth would be 0 0.6 point um this six approximate this um you can carry one six since six is greater than what five okay all right so you can carry one to this six here and we have 0 0.67 seconds all right so let's put this into our answer our standard grid okay because that's what the question asks we should what answer this in our standard grid all right so we put we put it here zero oh, that's one sorry zero six then point seven all right so let's shade here we have one here we have zero here we have six here we have a decimal point here and we have our seven here okay so this is our answer question six of the ged math practice test part one that's the part with calculator it says ralph bought several containers of sand so he could make sand paintings he now wants to consolidate all the sand into one big container. According to the picture, that's the pictures below, how many of the little containers of sand 
okay this is a small container this is a large container okay how many of the little containers of sand will he be able to fit into the big container of sand okay so how many of these little containers of sand will he be able to fit into the big container of sand okay so that's that's mean uh how many um quantity of sand would he pour in here okay that's um and that would fill in what the large container of of sand here so maybe he would fill when he fill this up he pours in okay it's not yet full he has to fill this small container up again pause pour into the large container um it might it might still not be full so we need to know how many quantity of containers of uh sand of the, of the small container of sand he needs to fill in what the large what container so to do this we need to find the volume of the small container and also the volume of the large container then what do we do we we'll now divide the volume of the large container by the volume of the what small container to know how many um, containers of this um, so how many containers of this small uh, uh, the small one would fit into the large word container okay so remember what's the volume we, we are dealing with okay this is a cylinder here and uh, this is a cube this is a cylinder this is a cylinder and what's the volume of the cylinder I hope you remember you'll be giving your, your formula sheet so the volume of the cylinder so you you know you don't need to cram um, um formulas you'll be giving your formula sheet so it's easy for you so the volume of the cylinder is what pi r square h what volume of the cube okay the volume of the cube is just simply um the the most you must just multiply the three sides okay which is what uh l cube all right that's the three lengths the length you know the cube all the three um, the length the breadth the height is what equal all right so it's just l times b times what h okay which is l l cube all right because the length the breadth the height is what equal all right so let's find the volume of the small container all right so here i think okay yes this is one yes this is one yeah it's not quite clear okay so this is one so we have to find the volume of this small cylinder on top then the volume of the word cube added together we're going to get the volume of the small container okay so let's just write uh, small container small container volume is equal to what's the volume of the cube here okay for, let me just say cube plus cylinder all right so the cube will be what this is three times three times three okay that's three times three times three then plus the cylinder will be what pi times what um the um the radius of the cylinder on top of this um, small container is one so pi that's one squared times and the height from here to here is also once one uh, one centimeter so sorry this is should be multiplication times the height which is what one centimeter so from here what is three times three times three that will give us what 27 all right so from here we have one square is still one times one is still one and pi will be given in your formula sheet as what 3.14 okay so when you add this up together when you add this up together what are we going to get we're going to have what 30 point 14 centimeters so this volume of the small words container okay all right follow me closely okay now let's go to the volume of the large container large container volume okay so we have two cylinders here the small one on top and the bigger one all right okay so uh so let's say uh big plus small here all right okay so the big one is this one here all right well our formula what's our formula our formula is by r square the big r square big h plus by the small r the small h okay so where well, our pi will still be what uh our pi will be three points what one four okay so we have here our big r is what three centimeters is that not it three centimeter so we have times what three square and our big h is from here to here this is our big r that's the the radius of the what bigger cylinder our big h is what the height of the word bigger cylinder is what times what five then plus pi 
a small radius which is the radius of the small cylinder is what this from here to here which is what 1.5 so times 1.5 square times and the height of the small cylinder on top of it what is a uh, two centimeters so times what two okay so here we have here pi which is what 3.14 times 3 squares what 9 times 5 okay plus 3.14 times uh, 1.5 uh, 1, <clears throat> 1 square will give us 2.25 times 2 okay if you multiply this all together punch in your calculator multiply this you're going we're going to have we're going to have this for this we're going to have 14.3 then plus we're going to have here 14.13 okay and when we add this up what are we going to have we're going to have 155.43 centimeter okay so this is the volume of the large container and what is the volume of the small container so to know how many of the small container the sand um, of, uh, of the small container would fit into the large container all we need to do is just say 155.43 divide by what 30.14 and when you punch this into your calculator you're going to have 5.1569 okay from here we can see our answer is given in two decimal places okay so let's um approximate this to two decimal places so here what do we have here so this will be five then after the points we count one two then the next number immediately after this um, particular the second value the second number here is six which we can approximate okay that's um, is greater than five we can carry one to this to add up to our five here which will make us which will make what six so in approximating this to two decimal places we have five point what one six okay we'll carry one from here to add up to our five here and we have six so this is our answer and our right option here is option four question seven of the ged math practice test that's the part one with calculator it says drew runs out of gas on the side of the interstate he decides to make a collect call to his parents to let them know so that they can send help he remembers that if he calls this uh, particular number he can save a few cents here and there their standard rate is what one dollar 26 cents for the call and 0 0.04 for every minute of talking if he can convince the operator that this is an emergency call and that he is stranded on the interstate he may get a 12 percent discount how much would he save by doing this on a 13 minute call so from here the question says uh, <clears throat> So he can save a few cents here and there and their standard rate is what one dollar 26 cents for the call so this is standard immediately you want to make the call okay the standard rate is one dollar what 26 cents okay and zero point that's uh, four cents for every minute of talking so every minute he pays what zero point zero four that's four cents okay if he can convince the operator that is that this is an emergency call and that he's stranded on the inter interstate he may get a 12 percent discount okay so he may get a 12 percent discount uh how much would he save by doing this on a 13 minute call so we have to first of all find um, the total amount okay he's going to use then we'll now get the, um, the discount the, the, the discounted amount okay all right so um, how much will he save by doing this on a 13 minute call so first of all to get the total amount he's going to spend on the call the standard rate first is 1.26 cents plus it's a 13 minute call so this will be 0 0.04 times 13 so for the 13 minutes it will be what 0, 0.0 that's 4 cent times 13 because it says um and 4 cent for every minute of talking so it will be this times what 13 minutes all right so we have 1.26 plus what is this times this it's going to give us what 0 0.52 that's 52 cents okay when we add this up we're going to get what we're going to get one dollar 
78 what cent okay so this is the amount he's supposed to pay but if he convinces the uh, the operator that it's an emergency call he would get what a 12 percent discount so we find the discount 12 percent discount of this amount so we have 12 percent of one point that's one dollar 78 cent that's 12 over 100 times one dollar seventy eight cents okay when you punch in your calculator you're going to get what zero point two one three six okay so, so he's going to save this what amount okay that's twelve percent of what one point seven eight okay so this is the amount is going to save and we need to approximate this okay in approximating this uh, you know this is a um, um, in, um, in um, cent in dollars okay so that's like two decimal place if we check here one two can three can three approximate carry can we take one here no it is below five so we can approximate we can um, shift one carry one here to add up to this one so we're left with what 0 0.21 okay so he's going to save what 21 cents this is the amount he's going to save and our right option here is option three Question 8 of the GED math practice test, that's the part 1, with the part with calculator. It says, Mary deposited $1,325 in her checking account and soon after paid her bills as follows. Okay, she had to pay her mortgage, uh, which was $935, her credit card, which was $136, her car payment which was $432, her utilities which were uh, $210. Afterward, her checking account had a balance of $513, okay, as after all these payments. How much was in her checking account before she made the deposit or paid her bills, okay? So how much was in her checking account before she made this particular deposit and paid her bills okay so it means um, we have let's say that the the, the 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 amount let's give the amount the amount that was in her amount amount that was in her account okay let's just say amount that was in her account okay before the deposit and before she started paying her bills, okay, is equal to X. Let's give it as X, okay? So it means that what um, the total amount in her account will be what X. After paying this, it will be X plus what? 1, 3, 2, 5. That will be the total amount that was in her account, okay? Okay, let's just, let's just leave this here, this total, all right? Okay, now... Let us try to find the total amount that she spent, all right? That's her payment, the mortgage, her credit card, car payment, everything she spent, all right? So in finding this, okay, we will, let's get the total amount. So we have here for her mortgage, she paid 935 for her uh, credit card, 136 for her car, 432 for her utilities to 110 okay when we add up all this if you if you punch in your calculator you get 1713 more dollars okay this is the total amount she paid out okay so from here we know the total amount she spent okay and the question says afterward her checking account had a balance of what 513 that's 513 dollars okay that's after all this expenditure ex after all this expenditure okay she had still had what 513 okay so if we add 513 to this to the total amount she spent it will give us the total amount in her checking account okay because she spent this and still had a balance of what 513 so if we add this up we are going to get the total amount in her account all right so we ha we have this so this plus this will give us a 6 1 plus 1 will give us a 2 7 plus 5 will give us a 12, that's 2 carry 1, and 1 plus 1 will give us a 2. Okay, so she had what? A total of $2,226 uh, in her checking account. That's the total. So from here, remember this statement, okay? We are trying to look for, from this statement, it says that the amount that was in her account before is X, then plus 
the amount she deposited is what 1325 which will give us what the total and we've gotten our total here as what 2226 so we just simply do x plus 1325 equal to what 2226 so x will be equal to what 2226 minus 1325 and when you subtract this what are you going to have we are going to have what 900 and what <coughs> We're going to have nine hundred and one dollars. Okay, so this is our answer. So this is the amount she had before making what this particular deposit or before she paid her bills. Okay, so this is the amount she had in her checking account. All right. So in putting this in on, on the standard grid, we write a nine here, we write a zero here, and we write a one. So we go down to shade our nine, and here to shade our zero. And here to shade one okay so this is our answer this is how we answer on the standard grid question 9 of the GED math practice test part 1 that's the part with calculator it says a jet fighter pilot is flying over a testing ground to determine how many windows in a specially designed building would break at certain speeds according to the chart below how many windows will break if a jet flies March 4 Okay, that's, uh, I think, machine four. If a jet flies March four, okay? All right, so we have this uh, chart here. It also says, assume that the number of windows broken rises linearly, linearly with the velocity of the aircraft, okay? So, okay, we have to assume that the number of windows broken rises linearly with the velocity of the what aircraft. That is, linearly means... Um, as as the velocity increases the number of windows broken also increases okay so it's like linear the same just like saying v varies directly proportional to the number of windows what broken okay so linear is what as velocity rises number of windows what broken that's what the statement means okay so from here from our chart all right we can see that um that uh, when he drives when he flies much four we have um, 124 windows broken. When he flies March 5, we have 310 windows broken. When he flies March 8, we have what 496 what windows broken. From here, we can see something here. We can see that the difference between um, each match, okay, that's 5 minus 2 is what 3, and 8 minus what 5 is what. Is also three you can see the linear relationship here and 310 minus uh, 124 will give us what we give us what uh, 186 and 496 minus 3110 will also give us what 186 so it shows the linear what relationship but the uh, question here says uh, what's the question it says how many windows will break if a jet flies March 4 okay so we know that uh for velocity okay and uh, window uh, windows broken okay uh for velocity we this is like uh, we're going to do proportion here for velocity at uh, three march okay that's at three march since we have uh, the, the difference between each of the matches three, we have how many windows broken at three match? We have 186. So for four match, how many windows are we going to have broken? It will be what? X. So all we need to do here is what? We say in proportion, we have three over four equal to what? 186 over X. So we cross multiply. So we when we cross multiply here, we have 3 times x, which is 3x, is equal to 186 times 4. Okay? And what is 186 times 4? We have what? 7, 4, 4. And we have 3x here. Divide both sides by 3. Okay? 3 divided by 7, 4, 4 will give us what? x will give us what? 2, 4, 8. Okay? So we're going to have 2, 4, 8 what? Windows broken. Okay? At match what? 4. Alright? So this is our answer. And our right option here is option 3. Question 10 of the GED math practice test. That's the part 1, the part with calculator. It says a quadrilateral QRST is a kite 
three of the points are as follows this this and this if the kite is four wide and seven long where is the fourth point okay and it says answer this question in the coordinate plane provided on your answer sheet okay all right um let me see what can we do here okay we we can actually use this to answer the question okay but um should we go ahead okay okay let's let me just draw the, the or let me just draw mine okay let me draw mine just to be on the safe side all right okay we have our y here we have our x we have our minus y we have our minus x so let's say this is one this is uh this is two this is three we have a five here okay no no this five is in the x um, region okay so we can stop at three actually okay so let's do one here let's do two let's do three let's do four and let's do five okay okay so we can stop here since we don't th these are the three points and there's no negative value so we're just in the positive region all right for the first point it says uh, one which is what x the coordinates x and y okay so this is x at one and y at one which is somewhere here okay that's the first point the next point is what x at what five and y at one so we have here x at what x at five all right and y at one which is will be here this will be the point and the last point is what x at uh, three and y at three so here we have it here okay all right so we can see this all right so what to look for the third the fourth point you know uh, a kite looks this way is that not it this is the way a kite looks okay it's a, a quadrilateral okay with four sides so you can see we already have this and this and you can see here you say if the kite is four wide so we can see with that we have a four wide already here okay that's we have one here five if you subtract five minus one this will give us four uh, centimeter or just it's four wide all right okay and it says if the kite is four uh, seven long that's from here to here that's a diagonal is what seven long that's me we from here we have to count what seven points what down all right okay so it means we have to label this part so here we have a minus one we have a minus two we have a minus three we have a minus four we have a minus five i think this should be okay so from here okay from the, the peak of the point of the kite since it says if the kite is what four wide which is wide is from here to here and seven long so from the peak of the kite to the bottom of the kite we have to count what seven what seven points so let us count together from here which is on three here so we have one two this is zero which is three four five six seven okay so we have the point here this is x at what three okay this is x at three and y when we count seven we stop at minus four and y at what minus four okay so this is uh this is the kite now let's draw it out and you see what i mean okay it would have been lovely to use this but you know we have to put our answers here so let's not spoil the coordinate grid okay so we have the shape of the kite as this where from here to here is what from here to here is what seven what seven what seven units what long okay and from here to here is what four units long all right so what is the the coordinate of the the fourth point is what x at what three and y at what minus four so this is our answer and to answer this on the answer grid we have x at three what is where is x x at what three and y at what minus four so we have our point down here question 11 of the ged math practice test part one that's the part with calculator it says okay we're considering this particular chart here okay and it says okay this is a range of uh, ball thrown in meters and we have um, let's just interpret this diagram and we have team one team two team three team four to team five and uh, here you have we have um, you can see the, dif the different colors um, this uh, particular darker shade is try one so this the next is try two the next is three try four try five so let's say uh, for team one 
you have this is try one this is try two try three four and five and there's a space here for team two this is try one try two then three four and five okay and so on till we get to um, team five where this is also try one try two try three four and five okay so we've interpreted this diagram all right and uh, <clears throat> from here also you see the range of the throw um, in what meters so we have zero to 25 meters here so the first question okay i think we're going to answer use this graph to answer i think from question 11 to 15 so the first question here it says which team would win if the average of the five throws were considered Okay, so he said, which team would win if the average of the five throws were considered? So, which team would win if the average of the five throws, and in each team had what, how many throws? That's uh, five, okay? So, if the average of the five throws of each team, okay, which one would win? So, we have to find the average of um, each team, the, the five throws, all right? So, let's say for, let's start with... Um, Okay, now you can actually, uh, when you look at this particular graph, instead of you, instead of us to waste, instead of you to waste time, just look at um, the the throws, the length, okay, of um, each of the team. Uh, just look at the numbers to see which one is quite high, okay. So from here, if you just uh, just peruse through this, you can see that um, the team five, you have uh, this is high. Uh, the first try, the first try was. Uh, uh 7.1 this is 18 17 17 so it's quite high team four you have five this is low for the first try this is also low this is high 19 is high and the last try, try which is try five is quite high so and also team three um okay this is also quite considerable they are all quite high so you can just um, just consider picking the highest instead of us you know you can waste time trying to go from team one to find the average going to team two to find find the average but our question here says which team would win if the average of the five throws were considered so we are looking for the team where the average is the highest all right and from this particular chart the graph you can see that this team one and team two this the numbers here are quite low you can see this line here Okay, they are quite low. So um, we're just going to cut out team two and team one and find the averages of team three, four, and five. All right, so because this is where our answer would fall because these first two teams, they are quite low. All right, I hope you, you're getting me, but just follow me closely. You understand what, what I'm trying to do here. So let's um, sum up. You know, to find the average now, we're going to sum up what the throws, okay? Sum up the, the five throws, then divide by five. That is the average. You know, you sum up the total number of uh, the sum of the throws, then divide by the total number of throws, which is what five. That's the tries. All right. So for team three, just follow me closely, and you understand what I'm uh, what we're trying to do here, or what I'm trying to do. Okay. So for team three, we have what seventeen point one plus sixteen point eight plus sixteen point two plus twelve point eight and plus what fifteen point eight and divided by what five so when you add this up punching your calculator you are going to get seventy eight point seven divided by five and this will give us what fifteen point seven four okay let's try to look for the average of team four okay we have here we have uh, 22.3 plus 19.1, this is where I am, then plus 15.4 plus 9.7, then plus 5.8 divided by 5. When you add this up, we're going to get what 72.3 divided by 5, which will give us what 14.4. Four eight. So this is quite is lower than team uh, team three. So let's find what team five would give us. My bet is team five is the highest. Okay, that's the um the one that the team that would win. Okay, so let's find out what this would be. Seventeen point nine plus seventeen point seven plus seventeen point four plus eighteen point two. 
let me put this up here plus 17.1 all divided by what five okay when you add all this in all this up okay add all this up what are we going to get we're going to get 88.3 divided by five and this will give us what 17.66 so the team that would win okay is the one with the highest average all right of the five throws and our team is what team five so our right answer here is option five okay so when you ha have this particular um question um don't waste your time going to the lower ones okay because we would have you would have spent more minutes if we calculated for team one team two all the way to team five okay so just look at your graph and just strike out some and go to the three next um three next teams or values that you feel the average was falling all right okay so here our answer is what option five question 12 of the ged math practice test that's the part one the part with calculator it says you know we're still on this graph okay and it's the question says what was the range of throws for all the teams for all the tries okay so what was the range and and uh here you know when it, when you hear range here now this is not um range in meters now okay range is the highest score minus what the lowest what score okay that is range in statistics all right the highest score minus what the lowest score okay highest score minus what the lowest score okay so here and it says what was the range of throws for all the teams and for all the tries you can see this for all the teams that's we're not looking into a particular team for all the teams and for all the tries so we're going to check all the teams and what all the tries so what is the highest score okay the highest score if we see here we have a 22 uh -huh, 22.3 the highest scores falls in team four so this is the highest score which is what 22.3 and what is the lowest score the lowest score here also falls in what team four which is what 5.8 so 22.3 minus what 5.8 and what would that give us 22.3 minus 5.8 will give us what 16.5 all right and our answer is okay 16.5 the answer we can just add a zero here okay since um you know that there's a zero added to our answer so our answer is what option five question 13 of the ged math practice test part one that's the part with calculator okay we're still on this uh, particular chart here it says if every time the pitcher had to walk to the ball and bring it back to the throwing line after every throw okay okay let's interpret this if every time the pitcher had to walk to the ball and bring it back after and bring it back to the line after every throw so let's say the pitcher is here okay he throws the ball okay you know this this is a range of throw a, a pitcher throwing the ball and you have several teams so he throws the ball okay the ball is here and every time the pitcher had to walk to the ball and bring it back to the throwing line after every throw so let's say this is the throwing line okay so it means after he has thrown the ball he has to walk to the ball pick it pick it up back and come to the throwing line okay so the question now says how far would he have walked because of team trees throws okay how far would he have walked because of team three's throws okay so let's focus on team three now so uh, uh for team three you know every team had what had what uh, had what five tries right try one two five is that not it so the first one he would first of all when he throws uh the first try is that not it is here he throws the first try so he throws the first try the first try is what they were focusing on team three here as the question is the first try is what 15.8 meters so he walks 15.8 meters all right to pick the ball so we have here 15.8 meters then he also throws another try so he walks how many meters now 
This is 12.8. So we add another 12.8 to pick the ball. So he walks 12.8 meters to pick the ball. Because the distance from here to here is what? 12.8 meters. Then... He throws the second try is what 6.2. So we add well, 16, sorry, 16.2. We add it up. Then the sec the fourth try is what 16.8. So he walks, pick the ball, come back to the line. Then the last try is what try five, which is what 17.1. So when he throws the ball, he comes, he picks it up. So we have to add up all the what the length all right because this is in meter the range of the ball is what in meter okay so when we add this up what are we going to get if you punch in your calculator we are going to get a total of what 78.7 all right which is also equal to what 78.70 all right so this is our answer and our right option is what option two Question 14 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 1, that's the part with calculator. It says, we're still on this particular chart here, okay? It says, what is the median of the third try, okay? What is the median of the third try? All right, you know, the median is what is, is the middle number. Is that not it? The median is the middle number in statistics. And it says the third try. So we're looking at this particular try, this shade, okay? So the third try... That's the third try in every of the team, all right? So the third try for the first team is we have one, two, three. So for team one, the third try is what? Team one, the third try is 11.3. Team two, let me just write two here. Okay, team two, the third try is this one, two, three, is what? 11.5. For team three, one, two, three, we have what? 16.2. Uh, then for team 4, 1, 2, 3, we have 15.4, uh, that's the fourth try. Then for team 5, 1, 2, 3, that is what, 17.4. Now we have to find the median of these particular scores, okay? That's the length, the range of the ball through, we have to find the median. And in median, we have to, what, before we um, get the middle number, we have to arrange the number in an ascending what order. That's from the lowest to the highest. Okay, so what's the lowest number here? Uh, the first lowest number, no, the first lowest number is what 11.3, comma. The next is what 11.5. The next here is 15. Okay, 15.4. The next number is what 16.2. Then the final number will be what 17.4. So in an ascending order from the lowest what to the highest. All right. So the median will be the middle number. Is that not it? So our median here in this question is what 15.4. Okay. So this is our answer. All right. So our answer is this. That's option two. That's 15.40. So this is our answer. And remember. When you, when you, you know, why it's easy for us to get this median is because this, the set, okay, the set of this number is what is odd. If you had like an even set of numbers, let's say we have another number, let's say we have an 11.1 added and we have 6. You can, you notice you can't get the middle number, is that not it? When you have a problem like this, I'm just um, adding, adding up to this question. When you have a problem like this, all you need to do is the two middle number, okay, if you're told to find the median and you have a set of numbers that is what even. Okay, so you add up the two middle number and you divide by two. That's how you find that. But for this particular question, our set of numbers is what odd. So it's easy for us to find the middle number as what 15.4. All right, so our right option here is option two. Question 15 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 1. That's the part with calculator. Okay, we're still on this graph, and this is the final question on this particular uh, on this particular uh, graph and uh, chart here. Okay, so it says, what is the mode of all the throws? So of all the throws, what is the mode? And in statistics, what's the definition of mode? Okay, the definition of mode is what? The most uh, frequently occurring number. So in the, the, the length that occurs, called uh, more than once okay the most frequently occurring number is what the mode so we have to find uh, how many throws occurred as in which throw occurred frequently and from here if we find 
Okay, we have 11, 10.1. Do we have a 10.1 anywhere? No. 13.5, uh, do we have it anywhere? No. 11.3, we don't, we don't, we don't. For all this, no, no, we don't. This, no, this, no, we don't. But if you come here, you have 17.1 here, and we have a 17.1 here. So this is the what the most frequently occurring what score okay which is what 17.1 so our mode in this question is what 17.1 okay so this is our mode you can see with this uh, particular stats and graph the graph we have here we've learnt on median we've learnt on mode and we also learnt on i think range okay so it's important we know all this okay when preparing for our ged math test all right so the mode for this question the, this question is what 17.1 and our right option here is option two Question 16 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 1, that's the part with calculator. It says, J is playing a mental math game where he must collect points by doing certain tasks. For every second more that it takes him to complete a tax, 1% of the points he gains is taken away. If he earns 162 points in one minute, and 23 seconds when it's supposed to take 45 seconds how many points will he receive okay so it says here okay he plays uh, a game where he must collect points by doing certain tasks for every second more that it takes him to complete a tax one percent for every second more Okay, you can see this that he takes that it takes him to complete a tax. One percent of the points he gains is taken away. One percent is taken away. Okay, every second more he takes to complete the tax. Now, if he earns a total of 162 points, okay, in one minute. 23 seconds seconds when it's supposed to take 45 seconds how many points will he receive okay so it means he was supposed to take 45 seconds but he did this in what one minute 23 seconds first of all let's convert this one minute 23 seconds to seconds okay and you know how many how many seconds make one minute we have what 60 seconds make one what minute okay i hope you remember this 60 seconds make one minute okay so it means we're going to add 60 plus 23 to get the total seconds here is that not it so uh let me let me do let's do this somewhere here so that's 60 plus 23 and what would this give us this will give us what it will give us 83 seconds okay so the total seconds he took is what 83 seconds okay so his, he was supposed to what take do it at what as it was supposed to take what 45 seconds for him to complete what this task so let's find the total number of seconds he wasted all right because the question says for every second more that it takes him to complete the tax one percent of the point he gains is taken away so let's find forgive my statement so let's find the the extra seconds he it took j to what to complete the tax so to find the extra seconds it's just simply what 83 minus what 45 and that will give us what what would that give us that will give us what 38 what seconds so it took him 38 seconds more to complete what the tax all right so the question says also if that uh, okay for every second more that's each second of this 38 second that it takes him to complete a tax one percent of the points he gains is taken away so for each second he's spending more one percent of 162 points is taken away that's what this statement means so we have to find what well, what is one percent of 162 all right one percent of 162 let's find that find this out one percent of what 162 and that will be what one over 100 times what 162 
okay and this will give us what you know when you have 162 uh divided by 100 let me you have 162 over 100 you just count decimal places twice all right so we have one two and cancel 100 all right so here we have what one point what six two all right so for every one percent of one assist uh, of, of uh, 162 is what 1.62 so now let us find the total um points that will be taken away all right so for this is now this is for every one second he spends all right every one second more that it takes him to complete a tax one percent of the point is taken so for every one second this is the point that is taken away from his total point but here he spent what 38 seconds so we have to find the total point that is taken away from him all right and that will be one 1.62 times what 38 so what is 1.62 times 38 that's 1.62 times 38 punch in your calculator and we are going to get what 61 point what five six points okay so this is the total number of points that will be taken away from his point all right so the question now asks is finally how many points will he receive so the point he will receive is just a subtraction of 61.56 from what 162 and that will give us what what is 162 minus 61.56 what would that give us that would give us what 100.44 points so this is the point he's going to what receive finally after we've taken away the points he wasted okay because for every second more it takes him to complete a tax one percent of the point he gains is taken away all right so this is the point he would what receive and what is our right answer here our right answer is what option two okay you can see this is more of a word problem so all you need to do is take one statement at a time and just break it down all right take a statement at a time and break it down just understand it whatever the question says try to interpret it all right so this is a word problem and uh, i would also leave a link to i think i've done a video about uh, 10 word problems solved so i'll leave the link uh, to that video for you to understand more about word problems all right okay question 17 of the ged math practice test part one Start with calculator it says a few meter sticks are measured for quality control the lengths of the sticks are this this in millimeter this also we have um how many lengths we have one two three four five okay the question says what is the average length of the meter sticks okay this is quite easy and straightforward all you need to do to find the average length is just add up all this length and divide by what's total five and divide by five so we have zero one zero zero one point one two plus nine nine eight point nine five plus the one zero zero point one two plus one sorry one zero zero three point four then plus uh nine nine seven point one two and divide all this by five and this will give us what if you add up all this punch in your calculator you're going to get five thousand point four five then divide by five what are we going to get we're going to get 1000.09 okay so this is our answer and our right option here is option four okay so this is quite straightforward it's just asking for the average length and the average length is the sum of all the lengths divided by the number of lengths which is what five so our option our right option here is option four question 18 of the ged math practice test part one that's the part with calculator it says a bag contains three red balls, two green balls, three blue balls, five yellow balls, nine orange balls, four brown balls, and seven black balls. What is the probability of not drawing a green ball? Give your answer in fraction form. And it says we should answer this question in the standard grid on your answer sheet. Okay, so this is our standard grid. We have to uh, put our uh, answer in this grid. So, and it's also said give our answer in what fraction form. Okay, so no decimal points here. So, in fraction form. All right. And um, the question is asking us for what is the probability of not drawing a green ball? Okay, so we're focused on the green ball. Now, this probability, I hope you remember uh, probability. 
and uh, <clears throat> what it means you know probability definitely is what the number of um probability is what the no of required outcome no of required okay over the total number of outcome okay over total no of of required outcome okay over total number of outcome okay okay so here all right what's the total number of this of the balls that is the total number of our outcome so total number of the balls we have um, three red balls so we have three plus two green balls plus three blue balls plus five yellow balls plus nine orange balls plus four brown balls and plus seven black balls okay so the total of this when we add them up we're going to get what 33 all right now our focus is what's on the green balls that not he said the question asks, asks asks us here what is the probability of not drawing a green ball now to get the probability of not drawing a green ball we have to first of all get the probability of what drawing a big ball from the bag okay and the probability of drawing a big ball from the bag is the number of required outcome which we are focusing on green and what is the number of required outcome of green is two two divided by the total number of outcome which is what 33 so the probability of drawing a, a big ball not first of all we have to get the probability of drawing before we get the probability of not drawing okay so it is equal to what 2 divided by 33 then since we've gotten the probability of drawing a, a, a green ball so to get the probability of not drawing that's of not drawing a green ball out of the bag it will now be what 1 minus what 2 over 33 all right that's the probability of what of not with 1 minus 2 over 33 so whenever you see any question ask, asking the probability of not of something not happening okay it is what one minus the probability of that exact thing happening all right so um, that is in probability okay this has some particular principles in probability okay all right so let us subtract this so we have one divided uh, this is one over one definitely and our lcm here will be what 33 one in 33 is 33 and 33 times one will give us what 33 minus us 33 into 3 is 1 and times 2 1 times 2 will give us what 2 so what are we left with here we're left with what 32 33 minus 2 will give us what 31 over 33 now our answer says we should give your answer in what we should give your answer as in we should our answer should be in what fraction form all right so our answer is 33 over 34 and in representing it on the grid we have to write this like this way we have three we have one then we have a division sign here which is a slash then we have a three here and a three here okay then we'll go down to shade so we have we shade our three down here we shade our one our one is down here Okay, the division sign is up here. Then we have a 3 down here and also a 3. All right, so this is our answer on our standard grid. Okay, question 19 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 1. That's the part with calculator. It says we have this figure shown. As shown in the figure, what is the area of the inner white figure in square meter? okay so what's the area of the inner white figure so this is the inner white figure we have a semicircle here another one here another one and we have a square here so but to find this area of the inner white uh, inner white um, figure right what's the area of the inner white figure okay so this so we're neglecting all these shaded parts all right so let's um let's look at this inner white uh, figure we can see here this is semicircle and this semicircle is the same as this, the same as this, and the same as this. Why? Because this is here we have a square. Okay, this is a square here. And the semicircle, we have been given the radius of the semicircle as what one meter. That's from here. Any point uh to the center is what is what the radius. So the radius of this semicircle is what one meter. Okay. Any point from the circumference to the center is what the radius. So we have one meter. So it means that from here 
to here is one meter okay of the square this is one meter so if this is one meter it means that this also is what one meter is that not it okay because from here to here is one meter then this is like the diameter the diameter of any of um you know the diameter the diameter is just simply what two times what two times the radius which is what one so from here to here the total length is what two meter okay that's from here to here it's what two meter all right so we know the length of one side of the square so if this is two meter it means this is two meter this is two meter and this is what two meter okay and from here also to here is what one meter since this semicircle is what they are all the same all right so we have to find the area of the inner white circle and which will be the area of all these semicircles plus the area of the word square and what's the area of the square the area of the square is just simply what l times what l is that not it The area of the square is just simply the multiplication of what the length okay that's the length times breadth we have the same size so we just say l square so area of square equal to what l square okay and which will give us what two square and what is two square that's what four okay so we have four square meter okay so let's just drop this we're going to add it to the area of the semi circles okay so here we have how many semicircles we have one two three four and if you join two semicircles together what are you going to have we're going to have one circle is that not it two semicircles joining each other okay you have another semicircle here you have one circle okay so this is one so for the other one we have another semicircle here joining another we have another circle so it means we have two circles okay so and what's the area of a circle the area of circle is what pi r what square so if we have two circles that is what pi r square plus what pi r square is that not it all right so and what is our pi our pi is given to us as what 3.14 times what is our r our r is what one meter so we have one square plus 3.14 times what one square so what do we have this is one square one square is still what one so we have 3.14 plus 3.14 so and what will this give us 3.14 plus 3.14 we're going to have a 8 2 point then 3 plus 3 is what is 6 so we have 6.28 square meters so it's the, the total um, area of the inner figure here is just 4 plus what 6.82 and what is 4 plus 6.82 okay 4 point plus 6.82 will give us what that will give us a point two eight then we have a 10 okay that will be two eight here then 4 plus 6 is what so we have a 10.28 what square meter all right and our right option here is what option three okay so this is our right option option three all right that is what 10.28 square meter Question 20 of the GED math practice test, that's part 1, the part with calculator. It says, still on this figure, it says in the figure, what is the length of the side of the square, okay? I think from the previous uh, question, we've already gotten the length of the side of the square, which is 2. But let me still explain it here. How do we get 2? Since from here to here is what the radius of this, what, of this semicircle, okay? So it means from here to here is also what, 1 meter. And if you have the radius of a semicircle to get the diameter is just simply what two times one which is what two so it means that also the from here to here will be what two meter okay since we have one meter here from here this side to this side will be what one meter you can also do it this way then add one meter plus one meter you have what two meter and this shaded this point to this point is what the length of the side of the word square okay so our answer is what two meter and our right option here is option two question 21 of the GED math practice test part one that's the part with calculator still on this diagram it says what is the area of the shaded region what is the area of the shaded region so this shaded region what is the area all right so to get this area of the shaded region 
okay all we need to do is just what simply what we're going to subtract okay the area of the uh, non-shaded region that's the um, white the one with white then we'll subtract it from the area of the whole circle you know this shape is in a circle okay so we'll subtract it from the area of the whole circle and we're going to get the area of what our shaded region so it's just simply what area of shaded region is equal to what area of circle that's the big circle minus area of what area of white region which we've gotten from our previous um, question okay we're not going to solve that again since we've gotten the answer you know we got um i think 10.28 as our answer okay all right so all we need to define is the area of circle and the area of circle is what was formula is pi r what square okay so what's the area so what's the radius of this circle okay in getting the radius of this circle remember that uh we've been given here the radius of this particular semicircle as what one okay which means from here to here is what one as a radius okay so if we have from here to here let let me um let us use the center of the circle okay so we don't um we can we can also use here okay but let me use the center of the circle so you you understand all right so it means that from here to here is one right it's one meter okay which is the radius of this semicircle here and we've also confirmed that from here to here is what one meter is that not it I will also confirm that from here to here is also one meter. I hope you remember we did this together in a previous um, example. Okay, so it means also that from here to here is also what one meter. So the total distance, and this would be the center of what our circle. So we have a distance from here to here also. Is that not it? Which is also what one meter. So our radius of this big circle, considering the big circle now, is from this point to what this point, which is what one meter plus one meter. And what is one meter plus one meter? That will give us what two. So here we have what. This is pi r square minus ten point two eight. So here we have. 3.14 times what is our radius is what this plus this is what two meters so we have what two square minus 10.28 okay and when we multiply this one punch in our calculator this times this this is four right four times this will give us what 12.156 minus what 10.28 and when we subtract this what are we going to get the area of the shaded region will give us will be what two point two eight okay so this is two point what two eight what square meter okay so this is our answer and where is our right option our right option is option what five all right so this is our right answer question 22 of the ged math practice test part one that's the part with calculator it says a paperback book has 56 introduction pages um 1226 reading pages and another 18 index pages in it if the book weighs uh, 1.1 uh, uh, 1.12 pounds how many pounds does each page weigh okay i hope you know lbs means pounds okay so how many pounds does each page weigh okay so first of all we have to uh, know the total amount of pages okay that's the, for the paperback book and the total amount of pages is the 56 introduction page uh, we are going to add it to the 1,226 reading pages and also the 18 index pages to know the total amount of what pages. So we can know how much the book was, how many um, pounds each page weigh. Okay, so let's add this up. We have what 56 plus what 18 plus one one uh, one two two six. When we add this up, punching your calculator, what are we going to get? We're going to get one thousand three hundred. And we know that the question says if the total book weighs this, okay, that's one 
0.12 pounds how many pounds does each page weigh so, so it's definitely the weight of the total book which is what 1.12 pounds divided by the total what pages to get the weight of one page okay all right that's what the question asks is the weight of one what page how many pounds does each page weigh so we have 1.12 divided by 1300 what pages and what would this give us if you punch in your calculator we're going to get a 0 0.00086 uh, we're going to get a 1 then 5 3 8 okay so this will be uh, uh, your calculator but if you see here you can see this is um uh you can see our answer the closest answer here if we approximate this to to let's say three significant figures okay three significant figures that's mean you are going to we're going to count you know in approximately to three significant figures you start from where the number the the a value starts okay you can't start from zero because zero is, doesn't have any value okay so we start from here so we have eight six then the third one the number is what one then you now go to the fourth number okay and you ask yourself is this number greater than or equal to five okay if it is greater than five or equal to five you can we can approximate a one okay you can carry a one and add it to this one here okay so this is five so definitely we can definitely carry a one here so one plus one will give us what a two so we approximate towards zero point zero zero six eight six two so this is our answer and our right option here is option one Question 23 of the GED Math Practice Test Part 1. That's the part with calculator. It says, Jimmy has a rabbit farm. He has a group of rabbits that produce at a rate of 11% and another group that produce at a rate of what 15%. Okay, so there are two groups of rabbits, one at um, a rate of 11% and another at what 15%. Okay, then it says the second group of rabbits has one four five less rabbits than the first the second group of rabbits that is the 15 percent okay because this is the first and this is the second group okay so the second group of rabbits has what one four five less rabbits than the first don't worry we are going to interpret this but let's just read up the question and he now says after a year he had 1120 more rabbits than in the previous previous year how many rabbits does Johnny have at the end of this year? Okay, so after a year, he had what? 1,120 uh, 1, more rabbits than in the pre previous what, year. Okay, so let us uh, interpret this now. Now, he has a group of rabbits. Let's say the first group, okay, the first group produces at what? 11%, all right, and the second group, we we'll put the second group as S. S produces as at what? At what? Fifteen percent. Okay. Okay. Follow me closely. All right. And it says that the second group of rabbits has one four five less rabbits than the first. So it means S, which is second, is equal to what? F minus what? One forty five. It has what? One hundred and forty five less rabbits than the first. This statement here simply means that what uh, in the first year, F, that's the first group that had 11%, had more rabbits. Okay, because see, look at, look at the statement. It says the second group had, group of rabbits has what? <clears throat> the second group of rabbits has one five less rabbits than the first. So F had more than what S. So that's why this particular, this is the, the, the equation that would what represent what this particular statement. Okay, so this is the equation. So, okay, so we have this now. So this is the uh, amount of uh, what second group. The second group had this amount, all right? So what is the total amount of rabbits for the first year okay because if you see full stop it said after a year so it means there was a total amount for of rabbits the first year so the total amount of rabbit the first year is just simply we're just going to add this plus what f okay because this is s the total amount for first year is equal to what s plus f is that not it it's, it's as simple as that or you just say it's the first group plus the second group we're trying to interpret this question okay this is a word problem so all we need to do is 
f will still remain the same so f and what is s s is what f minus what so we say plus what f minus 145 so here what are we going to have we're going to have what two what f minus what 145 so let's keep this down so this is the total for the first year now you now said that after a year okay he had 1120 more rabbits than in the previous year so we have to what interpret this so in the previous year so we have to now find how many uh, rabbits it, uh, was produced from the first group and also how many rabbits was produced from what the second group and using the amounts that he had the year okay that's because the first year all right because it says after a year so this is like this um the, pre the the previous year that's the year now we are in okay so from from this question now you can see that we're just playing around two years a year then after that year we have another year so we're just playing with two years all right okay follow me closely so at the end of the first year all right he had s the second group was had produced how many f minus what 145 and the first group was still what f for the first group f is equal to what f all right okay so definitely how many would he now produce after a year so what he will produce after a year now we were told from the question that he produced at a rate of what 11 percent so it is going to be 11 percent of this particular amount all right follow me closely so for the second year that is the year we are in now okay uh let me say this okay let me just say second year which is also the same as what the end of the year okay okay so for the first group is going to produce how many it's going to produce 11 percent of what of f and what is 11 percent of f 11 percent of s f is what 11 divided by 100 is that not it times what f and which is what 0 0.11 f okay then for s it's going to produce what 15 percent of the amount it had okay 15 percent of what f minus what 145 because that's the production what rate so what would this be this is still the same as 15 divided by 100 bracket f minus what 145 which will give us what o point which will be what 0 0.15 bracket f minus 145 okay are we following are you following now all right so we have this is the amount for the second year what the first group will produce the first group produces this and the second group will what produce this now the question further says that what he had what 1120 more rabbits than in the previous year okay so it means now that for this statement so there are two things there's two statements we are going to form right now now 1120 more rabbits means that for the second year what the second year produced okay at this particular rate is what 0.11 f plus 0.15 bracket f minus 145 bracket close bracket is equal to what one one two it costs 1120 what rabbits okay so this is what was produced the second year that's this year itself okay so this was what was produced what the second year all right that's the rates you add up the rate of the first group and the second group it gives us this so and also this this all statement also means also that you see this from the statement he had 1120 more rabbits than in the previous year so it means that by the end of the year okay we have to add this one 1120 to the sum that it had the total of what the first year i hope you're following me closely okay follow me closely here let me uh, draw this okay so it means by the end of the year we are going to have what 2f minus 145 plus what 1120 okay that's the total of the first year plus the total of the what second year 
this would what would this what is going to give us by the end of the year. And if we simplify this, we are going to have here two f. We have a minus one to forty five plus one one two zero. That would give us what a plus what? Um, if you punch in your calculator, we're going to have a plus nine seventy five. So this is this is what we are going to have at the end of the year. Okay, and this particular equation is what we have in the second year. Okay, the total in the second what year. All right, so let us. I, I hope you're following me. This equation, let's say equation two. This is equation. No, we have the first equation here. This is equation one. Okay, this is equation two. Okay, and this is equation three. Okay, this is our final equation. This is the total at the end of the year. Okay, and this is what the total at the second year, the total rabbit he got in the second year. This is the equation, all right, which is um, the percentage. Okay, 11%. That's the production rate of the first group, which of the first year, then, you know, if the first year he has, he has already produced something. So we can't start from the beginning now. We have the second year has to start from what was left from the first year. That's why we did 11% of what F, what was in the first year of the first group. And 15%, this will be supposed to be, there's supposed to be a percent here, 15% of what, what was left in what the first year. That's why we have these two, these two answers here. All right. And the addition of this will give us what? 1120. Okay. <clears throat> That's the total rabbit it produced the second year, okay? And at the end of the year, all right, which is supposed, this end of the year now is supposed to be for this, okay? At the end of the year, we add up what, what he had in the first year, which is this, plus what he had at the what, second year, which is what, 1120. As the question stated, he had 1,120 more rabbits than in the previous year. So we just add up this to what he had in the what, first year. So this is the value he's going to have at the end of the year. So from here, let us try to get what? the value of what f okay so we're going to simplify this to get the value of f then when we get the value of f we'll put it into this equation to get the total number of rabbits is going to have at the end of what the year all right so from here let us let us simplify this particular equation so we have 0.11 f plus okay let's open up this bracket we have 0.15 times this which will give us 0.15 f then minus 0.15 times minus 145 will give us minus, as a punch in your calculator, we're going to have 21.75 equal to 1120. All right, so from here, if we add up this, what are we going to have? We're going to have uh, that's a 0 0.26 watts F, okay? And if we take this here, it's going to be a plus. So 1120 plus what? Uh, okay, let me just write this down. 1120 plus 21.75. Taking a minus to the other side of the equation will give us a what plus. So from here, what I will left to this plus this will give us what? 1141.75. Then we have here 0 0.26 what? F. So to get F, we divide both sides by what? 0 0.26. So let's divide 0 point what? 26. Cancel, cancel. F will be what? Punching your calculator and we're going to have what? Uh, F is going to be equal to what? 4, we're going to have 4,391.3, okay? So this is what we're going to be left with and definitely we have to approximate, okay? We have to approximate, so we have to cancel out these three since we can't have a quarter of a rabbit, okay? So let's just approximate this and we say our F is what? Our F is equal to what? 4, three nine one all right so we've gotten our f as four three nine one now we need to know get the amount of how many rabbits does johnny have at the end of this year and definitely we are going to use this our equation all right let me use somewhere here please let me just squeeze it squeeze it here all right so we have here two f plus what nine seven five all right that's the total amount of what rabbit johnny would have is it Johnny? It's supposed to be Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay. This is, I think this is an error. Okay. So Jimmy would have at the end of what this year. So it will be this 
which would this our equation here equation word three so all we need to do is substitute the value of f into this equation so we have two times what is f f is what four three nine one plus nine seven five if we punch in our calculator we are going to get this times this plus nine seven five punch in your calculator and you are going to get what we're going to get nine seven five seven okay so this will be our answer nine seven five seven so at the end of this year johnny is going to have nine thousand seven hundred and what fifty seven rabbits okay so that's the total rabbit he is going to have and what will be our answer here okay the answer was to answer on the standard grid so all we need to do is write it down here so we have nine seven five seven okay so from here we shade this is nine this is seven this is five and this is seven so this is how we shade on our standard word grid and this is our answer okay so this is our answer for question 23 so for word problems you have to just uh, i would actually advise when you see word problems that you need a lot of interpretation you can skip it and go do easier ones that are easy to, straightforward to calculate then come back to it then interpret them the statement one by one and give your equations all right and also promise to leave a link to a video of a word problems i've solved several word problems i've solved to help you understand how to form your equations out of a word problem all right so let's get on to the next question question 24 of the ged math practice test part one the part with calculator it says an operations research consultant in a small firm makes $235.06 an hour. He works a 30 hour week. Okay. And his contract allows him to end time and a half of anything over that. Okay. So he ends time and a half of anything over what 30 hour. Okay. It now say one week he worked 38 hours. At this rate, that is at the rate of uh, one week. Uh, he, he him working for 38 hours how much money will he have made in a month assume a month has four weeks okay round answer to the nearest dollar and answer this question in the standard grid of your answer on your answer sheet okay so now we we at this rate that is for one week he now works for 38 hours and we're told to find how much he would have made in a month and a month has but four weeks so let's try to break down how much he's going to have he's going to have make in a week then we multiply by what four weeks okay and we've been told that if he works more than 30 hours his contract allows him to earn time and half of anything over that okay so we're looking at 38 hours okay so we have 38 hours okay so the first thing is let's first of all find the extra hours he worked for so it is just definitely what 38 minus what 30 and which will give us what eight so he worked eight extra hours so definitely the total amount is going to make in a week is first of all the amount is going to make on his first 30 hours okay that will be 30 hours times what times uh $235.06. Okay, so we're going to find this amount is going to make on this normal 30 hour. Then we're going to now find how much is going to make on the extra eight hours. Okay, so when we punch in our calculator, 30 times this would give us um, that's going to give us punching your calculator, it's going to give you seven thousand uh, dollars. We have 50 and 51, and uh, we have eight cents. Okay. Or 80 cent I mean so we have 7,051.8 so this is what it's going to make in this normal 30 what hours so the extra eight hours now so let's find how much it's going to make so to, for the extra eight hours we have eight times the question says he's he works this and his contract allows him to end time and a half for anything over that so it will be what eight times bracket what is the time okay the amount is now going to end for this extra hours the time it ends for one hour is normally what two three five point oh six okay so it's going to end this time which is this then and ha and a half of anything over that and half of what this amount of so plus two 
35.06 divided by what 2. Okay, so this is what the statement means. It's going to end time then and a half of anything over that and a half of what the time. So let us solve what is in this bracket. So what are we going to have? This, this will be 235.06 times what? Oh, sorry, plus, plus. 117.53 okay so we're going to still a eight here so we have eight times if when we add this up we're going to have what three five two point five what four no point five what nine in your, your punching when you add this up okay so this is what is going to end for an extra what hour that is it's going to end its time plus half of anything over that and half of what this uh, particular amount so this is what's going to end for every what extra hour so and it worked for what eight extra hours so we have to just multiply this when we multiply this eight times this punching your calculator we're going to have what two eight two oh point seven or two and let us add this up to this remember it's first 30 hours which is a normal time and we multiply by this and got this so we have to add this plus this that's the eight extra hours and when we add this up what are we going to have seven five one point eight plus two eight two point two zero point what seven two we're going to have what we're going to have nine eight seven two point five two and this is just the amount it ends for what one week okay and the question says we should find how much is going to make in a month so it's definitely this amount times four okay so we have nine eight seven two point five point five two times four and what are we going to have we're going to have what thirty nine thousand and uh, four ninety uh dollars point what zero eight that's eight cents okay so this is what we're going to have and so our answer here says we should what round our answer to the nearest what dollar so from here and uh, this after this point this is a zero can we approximate we can approximate because this is what less than what five so when we approximate we have what thirty nine thousand four hundred and ninety what dollars so this is our answer all right this is what is going to end in a month okay and um we are going to write this here in our answer sheet that's our grid all right our standard grid and we have here a three nine four nine zero so let us shade we have a three here we have a nine down here we have a four here we have a nine here and we have a zero here so this is our answer okay all right so this is our answer question 25 of the ged math practice test part one that's the part with calculator it says the following paint can has a small notch on its lid okay so that one can store small paint tools inside it okay all right the basic that's the notch here the basic design is a cylinder within a cylinder how much paint could the following paint can hold okay round answer to nearest tenth okay and answer your question in the standard grid here all right so the question says how much paint could the following paint can hold okay so coming back to the question in the beginning it says the following paint can has a small notch on its lid okay so that one can store small paint tools inside it okay so this is a small okay and it says the basic design is a cylinder within a cylinder so this is a small notch that uh, stores the what the small paint tools okay and this is a cylinder inside a bigger what cylinder now it says how much paint could the following paint can hold so that's how much paint that's the the, the volume of uh, paint that it would hold after you've placed this particular sm small cylinder that holds the what the paint tools okay so it means the what is the volume of this in this place okay this place shaded white from here to here to here 
that's what the question is asking what is the volume of this space okay all right and the volume of this space would definitely be the volume of the big cylinder minus the volume of the what small cylinder that would help us to get how much paint that the what the paint can can hold okay so we're going to find the volume of the big cylinder then we'll subtract from the volume of the what small cylinder so it's simply what's the formula for finding your volume remember um you're going to give in your formula sheet so it's going to be easy for you you don't need to cram it but you can still have the formula at the back of your mind the volume of a cylinder is simply what by r square what h okay so here we're looking at two cylinders a big one and a small one so let's simply say we have what by big r square h and we're subtracting that volume from the what uh, we're subtracting the small volume from the uh, of the cylinder from the uh, big uh, the volume of the big board cylinder so we have minus what pi a uh, small cylinder a uh, small arrow then h okay so from here um so from here what do we have our uh, pi is uh, definitely 3.14 okay so we have 3.14 or uh, what can we do here we can just simply bring out pi so we don't have uh, just a shortcut bring out pi and what are we left with we're left with what arrow big arrow square h minus what small arrow square what h okay just to be faster so we have our pi here and our big arrow what is our big arrow our big arrow is the radius of what the big cylinder which is from here to what here okay and it is what six centimeters so we have six square and what is the height of the big cylinder is from here to what here which is what 10 centimeter times what 10 minus what is radius of the small cylinder this is a small cylinder and it is from here to what here that's from here to here and it's what four centimeters so we have four square and what's the height of this small cylinder is from here to here which we've been given as here to here which is what three so times three so what i've been left with we have pi six square times what and uh, uh, six square is 36 and 36 times 10 will give us what 360 minus what is four square that's 16 and 16 times 3 will give us what 48 what are we left with here we are left with pi this minus this will give us what a three one two and pi times this will give us what nine seven nine point what six eight okay from here we have to approximate because our question says round answer to the nearest tenths okay tenth means from the from the point okay if it was the nearest tenth tenth like this okay so it means that it it will be after it will be after the, the decimal point uh, no, say after no it will be before the decimal point we will be focusing on here okay but since we're having tens it is what after what the decimal points so we're focusing on the numbers after the decimal point so from here <clears throat> So if we're approximating to 10, it means we have to, uh, we will just have something, only a, a number here, all right? Okay, and from here, the number immediately after 6 is, is it, and which is 8, and is 8 greater than 5? Yes, it is greater than 5, so we can approximate a 1. So we add a 1 to what, 6 here. So what are we left with? We're left with what, 979.7. 7 1 point plus 6 is what 7 so this is our answer and to answer that on our answer grid all we need to do is right here 9 7 9 don't forget your point okay don't put the 7 here no put your point here and your that's your decimal point and your 7 and let us shade so we have a 9 here we have a 7 we have a 9 and our decimal point then seven okay so this is our answer all right so thank you for staying tuned to the end of part one the part with calculator thank you for staying tuned to this to the end i know it's quite a long one but there's still a part two the part without calculator which is quite tougher so i would love you the, the link to the part two okay is um i'll put the link in the video description box okay the link to part two make sure you also watch that that's another set of 25 questions you know the way the ged um test is taken your first part is part with calculator and then the second part is a part without calculator which is quite tougher 
okay so i've also done that also so this is the complete part for part one for the part two without calculator the link to the to that video is right here in the video description box okay click to also watch that which is also going to help you prepare well for your forthcoming exams okay and if you have any questions feel free comment comment ask questions and i would respond to you and also don't forget to subscribe to this channel please support us to grow it's quite a lot of work <laughs> i've put in here and i would love you to support me to do much more by just clicking the subscribe button okay and also uh, you can also support us um, by um, buying your kaplan gd textbook okay from you through our amazon affiliate link and also your your, your calculator that's the text that scientific calculator uh to also help you practice for your exams okay apart from watching videos text getting a textbook is key okay apart from watching videos apart from just watching the spanish you also you need to sit down with the textbook and practice a lot of questions and write don't just watch. No, pick up a pen, a pencil with your paper and practice and write and solve and solve. Don't just watch because mm -mm. it doesn't really, you know, when you put things down with your own hands, it helps you. It helps you assimilate more. OK, watching will help your understanding. Then when you're practicing solving it yourself, you know, it builds your confidence, too. Okay, it erases every tension from you because once you're solving, you're practicing with your own hands and you're getting the questions, your confidence grows. You know, it boosts your confidence. So please try to get, I'm not just saying buy the Kaplan textbook from us. You can get any other textbook, but you need a textbook. To study for this exam so please you can support us by getting the kaplan textbook from our amazon link and also the calculator if you need it all right to just practice on how to use it you can also get that from our amazon affiliate link and don't forget to join our facebook uh, group if you need support emotional support and encouragement you have other questions maybe you're solving a particular question in your textbook or or practice you can uh, just a picture and send on the group and definitely i'll try to solve that question for you post the video and you watch okay and also in several interactions on the facebook group i'm also going to leave the link to the facebook group in um, the video description box okay so thank you for staying tuned to the end of the video please make sure you watch the parts the part b which is the part without calculator also the same 25 questions solved and explained for you all right thank you and okay i will also leave you with this uh, logo and our team from the dtw math plus dtw means dtw means it means you are what destined to win okay so i would proclaim and declare to you that you are destined to win so go and succeed in your forthcoming GED test. And I'm also waiting for your testimony. When you pass that your GED math test, please make sure you give your testimony. Drop your comments and let me know. Please, your score, just let me know. Drop your testimony. I'm also waiting for that. All right. Thank you so much. So uh, up to our next video, which is what? Um, the part two of um, the solved question 25 without calculator. Thank you.